cuencas. What the hell are you doing? What's what's this? It's going to be fine, bro. We have an ambulance. We have medics. No one get no one fucking knocked out. Don't worry about it. At the center of it all was Andrew's right hand man, Iggy Samwise. Here I will share with you my secrets. He's the self-proclaimed greatest hypnotist in the world. You will learn the power of hypnosis. And seemed to have an agenda that expanded beyond the warum itself into something larger and darker. Your sons will marry their daughters. Your daughters will marry their sons. You will create legacies, enjoying those juicy steaks, that finer scotch, those smoother cigars. He refused to speak to us. But it's clear that he has a big role to play in whatever the war room's real agenda is. This is the war room of Andrew Tate. Welcome to the test. Now is decision time. You are getting in the cage to fight a professional fighter who is trained to hurt you. Anyone who is fighting, please stand up. Anyone who is not fighting, you can stay seated, and we will begin the other program. Just like that. A third of the room decides to get beaten up for Andrew Tate. What happens to the people who said no? They're doing something slightly different, describing the reasons they didn't do it, how that affects their life as a whole, whether they're going to make any changes in the future to be more ready for opportunities. That's where honor comes from, right? From victory. One of the men who said no agrees to speak to us as long as we hide his face. Why did you say no? I have been in the ring before, but just sparring. But I was like, fuck professionals and Russians. Like they, they, they guys are serious. I was just too scared. So then afterwards, I felt bad about myself, and I was angry at myself because it came here to be tested. Andrew Tate has obviously said a lot of kind of controversial things online. Yeah. What do you think about that? A lot of things are very controversial, but I think the bottom of his message is a very, very positive one. Because if I'm not tough on myself, nobody else will be. Nobody really cares about me if I don't care about me, right? That's what I learned from Andrew Tate. People who decided this morning, and people who decided that later date here. We have a chaperone following us. We've been told that we're not allowed to talk to anyone. <laughs> what about in passing, asking people like, what single question? Let me run this by tape before we film. No other comment. Okay. All right. Would so, you be up for that? Yeah. Yeah. Our chaperone vets who we speak to and tries to heavily control our questions. What do you Show do? Show that you're not okay. some sort of right wing extremist. For this. Why did you join the war? I don't want to be fucking stagnant. I need to grow. It's just a fundamental shift in my mindset. What I think could be bad is always good. For the war room, I used to think, why is this happening to me now? What is this trying to like teach me? About Andrew Tate specifically and the things he says online, the yeah. things that get him negative publicity. Yeah. What do you think about those things? I think he's speaking the truth. Really? Yeah. Interviewing under the chaperone's supervision is proving restrictive. Yeah. No, no fucking no alpha craziness. He's a bit of a, he's an animal. This one. So we can't speak to anyone. Okay. Who is this mysterious chaperone anyway? Hey man. Matt, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good man. Um, I was wondering if we could have a little chat. Yeah. Yeah. Me, man. Brought over from Dubai. Like wow. most Warham leaders, he has a sports car. Do you want to do the interview in here? Ah, uh, yeah. I don't see why not, man. And like most people with a sports car. He's keen to show it off. So, what do they call you? In these circles, uh, sartorial or the sartorial shooter. I'm one of the guys who manages uh, organizational risk and security for the war room. So, anyone with any criminal activity, maybe they are showing signs of being racist or sexist or any of these sorts of things, they're out straight away. We, we will not tolerate that. And so, how do you reconcile that with some of the things that Andrew, for example, says online? Any claims of misogyny or the fact that he's, you know, spreading hateful words, that's not the reality of who he is, and that's not what the Warham stands for, and that's not what he stands for. There are many clips of him out there saying, I'm not a misogynist, I provide for my women, I would stand up for my women in a violent situation. What do you think his detractors would say about, for example, what you just said, the phrase, my women? Do you think that they would consider that to be misogynist? The phrase, my woman, for me, ties into the very traditional values that we have. Andrew's well known for talking a lot about his multiple girlfriends. How does that tie into this idea of a traditional relationship? Mm -hmm. Men at certain levels can provide for multiple women. I and mean, even we can go back a uh, hundred years ago, kings, you know, wealthy men, they would support multiple families. How is that a bad thing? It's only very recently that men and women have been competing. 
in pretty much in, in masculine realms, in work, in career, not that long ago, and, and indeed in many cultures around the world, women still have the traditional gender norms. And we believe in the war room, that's what leads to happiness. Rather than a career.